Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me for another devotion this week. I'm going to look at something a little bit different today, and it's from the book of Joshua. Now, in Joshua, we've got all these, well, we read that the Israelites, you know, take Jericho firstly with the marching around the wall seven times and then them collapsing. Uh, and then we read all about the land allotments, what the different tribes got and the inheritance. And at first glance, it seems, well, what, what is all of this about? You know, why do I need to know that the Levites, um, uh, Gershon's descendants received 13 cities by lot? You know, it's, it's a little bit strange. But then we get to chapter 21, uh, verses 43 to 45. This is after all the, the inheritance and land allotments uh, have been stated. And we read in uh, chapter 21, verse 43 to 45. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give uh, their fathers, and they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them rest on every side according to all he had sworn to their fathers. None of their enemies were able to stand against them, for the Lord handed, all, handed over all their enemies to them. Verse 45. None of the good promises the Lord had made to the house of Israel failed. Everything was fulfilled. Let me say that again. None of the good promises the Lord had made to the house of Israel failed. Everything was fulfilled. So we get to passages like this in the Bible. And the first thing we tend to ask is, well, what does this mean to me? You know, why do I need to know that the descendants of Levites had so many cities? Well, firstly, because it's not about you. It's not about what it means to me. It's not about how I'm feeling in the moment. It's, it's about God. This is His Word. This is from Him. This is God's inspired, inerrant Word. So you read stuff like this and you think, well, maybe they could have left this out. Then you've missed the point because it's not about you. It's not about what you can perceive. It's not about what you can get from that. It's about God. He's a good, holy, sovereign God. And He has put that there in His Word for a reason. And if you just read through it a little bit more, you get to a passage like that, which says none of the good promises the Lord had made had failed. Everything was fulfilled. And there's the evidence. There's all the evidence right before we've read that verse that nothing had failed. None of his promises failed. All the evidence is there that God's promises are true, that they lasted. And the second thing is we can be confident of that. So firstly, it's not about me. Secondly, we can be confident that it is about God. It's about Him. It's about His purposes. It's about His plans. And so we get to these things we don't understand, but we know we can have confidence that God is working all things out, that His good promises will be fulfilled, that He keeps His word, that... Um, Despite anything that could go wrong and that can happen, God is still that sturdy, sovereign hand over history and over nations. Just after this, when you know the famous verse, As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Joshua speaks to the people and he says, you must choose today who you're going to worship. And the people say, well, we want to worship God. And Joshua says, you can't. He's, he's too holy. He's too good. And the people says, say, no, we want to serve him. We will serve him. And that's the point. The truth is he is too holy for us. He is too good for us. And without him, we, we, we don't know how to worship. We don't know how to serve him because we are not good and holy. And if it's by our own efforts and strength, we cannot. That's why it's important to worship him the way that he has taught us to worship him, to, to trust in his promises as being true, to, to not look at his word and say, well, what does this mean for me? How, what, what, you know, what can I get from this? It's not about me. It's about him. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word to us this morning. Thank you that all of your promises to Israel were fulfilled. None of them failed. Thank you that we can have full confidence that you are a God who is holy and sovereign and who will have his will in everything. Thank you that we don't have to try work out how to worship you and how to love you because you've told us how to. You help us. You show us the way. Thank you that you have reached out to us, that you have um, loved us and, and shown us grace and favor. We bless you and give you thanks for that. Lord, forgive us where we've used your word to try and make ourselves feel better about our sin, where we've tried to make it uh, fit into our bubble and understanding, where we've become God, where we've become the object of worship. Forgive us, I pray. 
Help us to choose today to serve you, not to serve ourselves, not to serve the gods that we have created, the idols that we have created, but to serve you and you alone. For you are sovereign, you are holy, you are good, and you will have your way in our lives and in this world, yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, we bless you, we worship you, we adore you in Jesus' name.